I don't know if I'm getting like Whoa! Okay. Science happened. <laughs> Science! At least I got that on camera. Hello YouTube. Today I'm gonna screw around with an automatic external defibrillator and we're gonna find out what happens. I got this unit because work was retiring it. It had been uh, in service for quite some time and I guess they accidentally didn't realize that the unit itself doesn't expire, only the pad and battery cartridge expires, so I got a free AED to screw around with. Um, disclaimers, don't try this at home, seriously. So uh, this replace in October sticker can kind of come off because it only really applies to the uh, one expiring component. The brain box inside it is dumb enough to fool with this analog circuit. All it really is, two pads for the uh, there are two electrodes for the pads to sit on, uh, one meg resistor and a 4.7 microfarad cap, um, just to, I guess, shape the waveform and act more like a human body. A couple sets of Zener diodes to decrease the voltage the further you go up this ladder, and then sets of LEDs that indicate the direction of current flow at different energy levels. Now I modified this circuit so I'm gonna have to try and work out um, just what kind of energy level each of these um, trigger at. The uh, organization that I got this from I guess didn't realize and I didn't realize that uh, these are cartridge based. This is the part that expires. There is a lithium battery in here as well as electrode pads and that's the only part that expires. The actual unit itself, itself does not really expire. Um, got a decent weight to it. Even has a uh, uh, sort of a USB data port to uh, collect after use statistics. All right, so I really only think I get one shot or two shots with this because it's a old battery inside the cartridge and they warn you in the manual, don't turn this thing on unless you intend to use it otherwise you drain that single-use lithium battery uh, faster. Um, so these are designed to basically just deploy with a velcro tab and then you take this other tab, which I guess I didn't stage properly, and uh, pull. Alright, so I have leads and I have electrodes, so I pull and separate. Oh, that's a lovely smell. I guess I should really turn this on at this point. Adult patient, call for medical assistance. It's just a Remove smooth. clothing from patient's chest to expose bare skin. How do I detach these? Pull green tab to remove pads. Yep. So this is a uh, biphasic unit. Peel pads from liner. Let's see if this actually can be... Apply to pads use. to patients assessing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Well, shock advised. Stand clear of no shock advised. Check pads. Check pads. Check pads. Alright, so at the terminals on the uh, pad unit, it's expect... Well, I think it's supposed to be expecting somewhere around 500 ohms to 1000 ohms. And I think I finally bodged it in place. So let's give this another shot. Check pads. Check pads. Press pads firmly. That is a couple degrees of frustrating. Check pads. Check pads. Assessing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing. Do not touch the patient. No shock advised. Begin CPR. I just don't have a circuit capable of emulating the, the pacing of a heart rhythm here. Hmm. I almost had it. 
Maybe he just needs a really loose connection? Shock advised. Stand clear of patient. No shock advised. Analyzing. Do not touch the patient. So it seems to need electrical noise. Analyzing. Do not touch the patient. No shock advised. Getting closer to fooling it. Call for medical assistance. Assessing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Let's then do some Stand clear noise. Of I don't know if I'm getting like advised. Stand clear of patient. Press the orange shock button now. Whoa! Okay. Science shock happened. <laughs> Science! At least I got that on camera. <laughs> Let's not do that again. So I've actually hooked up the AD to the computer by a USB cable. And I think it just fell asleep. Yeah, all right, there we go. I think so, yeah. Uh, so I can actually dive into all of the different uh, settings and events here. So time to wait for it to finish reading. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of different uh, events here. And I think, yeah, I've already looked at this and, and I guess technically if I'm editing this video a couple weeks late um, but yeah let's look at this particular event because this is the one that actually discharged so what do we have here we have all of the time logs here in a format that's equivalent to the strip chart that comes off of uh, the normal medical defibrillators when they hook a patient up um, they may have heart monitoring function already built in and they'll have that as a paper tape coming out of the machine so it sensed within five seconds the pads were applied and shaking the cable generated these slight um, differences in potential between the two electrodes measured as a slight voltage and the presence of this slight voltage um, fulfilled all the criteria required for the device to administer a shock so press the button shock goes bang <laughs> and uh you have this uh subsequent trace afterwards which is probably just the cables shifting around a little bit uh, if you kind of go to some other events um, you can see like as soon as the pads go on there's a voltage and then it's very negligible uh, and i guess otherwise very hard to uh fulfill the criteria. I think the very first time I hooked it up, um, yeah, this this one back on the 7th of August was all of 7 seconds. Um, it was not a real one, it was just power on, power off. There's all of this weird noise. Um, pads on, pads fault. Yeah. This is a weird one in 2016. Yeah, strange. That must be like a test, a test pattern or something generated by some sort of system. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so this particular model has all this software. You can uh, set the time. You can run diagnostics, uh, including actually charging the capacitors, which. Uh, drains quite a bit of energy from the battery. Um, it actually tells you how full it is, the volume of the thing, the metronome for the CPR. Um, yeah, so it's got test data, self-test data since 2016, um, noting the temperature, the time, and just checking that, hey, everything's still A-OK. -okay. Um, even after the filming of this video, the self-tests were passing. Um, yeah, and I actually have a, uh, one event saved locally to the computer. Why did it actually go bang? Why did it produce a large arc and vaporize part of the electrodes? And the answer is simple. I had screwed up. 
I had replicated this uh, defibrillator test circuit off of a paper that I found online, and everything should have worked fine, except I had accidentally short-circuited across the one megohm resistor, which would limit the current and otherwise all of the excitement associated with um, that kind of a, an electrical discharge. Um, so this defibrillator is never designed for a effectively zero ohm uh, load. It's designed for, you know, 500 to 1000 ohms across a human chest. Um, ultimately, it doesn't know what the impedance is across the chest. It just senses voltage. So it sensed a voltage that didn't meet the criteria of a full waveform and it didn't meet the criteria of a broken connection. Therefore, shock. But I think that's about it. So if you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, leave a comment down in the uh, box to tell me how you've never seen a defibrillator do that before because it was never designed to do that.